Well, we water cooled this here mini PC and somehow I didn't destroy it. <laughs> so let's see if I can get it back in the case and try some good thermal paste on it. See if it runs any cooler than it did before. And if it does, see if I can still achieve that 103 Cinebench benchmark, which would be nice. All right, guys, let's see if I can do the last part without destroying this thing. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for stopping in, I appreciate it. If this happens to be your first time here, consider subscribing. All right, well, it's been a few weeks. Hopefully I can remember how to put this thing back together. Should be pretty straightforward. We got some holes here. <laughs> so it obviously goes in one way. We gotta get the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth thing stuck back down in here. There we go. Well, we had some thermal pad on that. I'm gonna add the thermal pad to the Merriam chips. Yeah, that covers both. The wide. For the mini PC rebuild, we're going to use the MX4 Arctic thermal paste instead of the thermal pads. Let's see how this stuff does. Wow, if only if it still works, huh? Well, can't believe I got it back together. Got any bets out there that this thing's still gonna work? Well, let's plug it in and find out. Okay guys, I'm completely blown away. For one, I got it back together without breaking it. And it actually works better than when I got it. <laughs> surprised, really surprised with the results here. Um, first thing I noticed is I, when I first plugged in and powered it on, the fans ramped up full speed, then quickly shut off after it booted up the windows. Now, when I first unboxed this and was testing it, running the benchmarks, you know, streaming videos, surfing the web, doing all that kind of stuff. I found that it frequently ramped up the fans to full speed. So I started running the benchmark. It got halfway through the benchmarks under 70C. It finally made it to 70 and the fans come up a little bit. I'm running my second round on it right now and it's at that point right now and I hear the fans a little bit. Now the highest it got on that first test was 81 degrees Celsius and it never ramped up to full speed and even more surprising is if you remember on the original test the best I could score was a 93 on the Cinebench now on the water cooling the best I could achieve was 103 on the Cinebench I popped this thing together with it just changing out instead of a thermal pad doing the thermal paste I was able to achieve 102 on the Cinebench and the fans weren't near as fast or obnoxious as it was on the first time I did it before doing any of this. Absolutely completely shocked. So running the second test now that it's already warm and nearing the end here it's ramped up to full speed. The full speed on the fan seems to be at 83C and thermal throttling is at 85. Now, 
it has not hit thermal throttling yet. The most, the hottest the core has hit under full speed on the second test right after the first one is 84C. The current temperature right now went down a degree to 83C, it is still running at full speed. So it'll be interesting to see if that test score still comes back at 102 or somewhere close. I'm sure there's a little variance in there. Oh, it just ramped down. Oh, but the score is finished. Oh, and look at that. It finished at 103 on the Cinebench. As good as the water cooling and better than the first one. <laughs> that is awesome. If you end up getting one of these, it's easy to do. Just pop that cover off, pop that heat sink off, change out the pad to the thermal paste. Now, it doesn't take long for the temperatures to drop. And it cuts out at 62C. The fans shut off basically then. So it didn't take long once the benchmark was done, took the load off the processor, cooled it down just enough, dropped it out. Now you hear nothing. This thing's gonna be a lot quieter now, which is gonna be cool. So here's my plan. Now that I got the center bench out of the way, I'm gonna go through, do some streaming, do some web surfing, see if it performs any better. Cause before every now and then it would kind of hiccup a little bit. Not bad, but it would a little bit. I was actually kind of impressed. Maybe now, since this thing is not hitting thermal throttling, it might run better. And if I remember correctly, before when I was going through and just, you know, surfing the web, streaming videos, it was constantly running at that upper 70s to mid to lower 80s temperature. And now it's running cool. It's already down to 58C on the hottest core so let me check some things out and see how much better this thing does if it makes a difference because i think it does <laughs> i kind of like this mini pc hey guys i end up having to wait overnight for the windows updates on that thermal paste experiment here on the AWOL mini pc uh, with Windows running its updates throughout the night, I didn't want to be testing out the, uh, you know, the benchmarks and website streaming and all that stuff when it's already got 40 to 80 percent of its processor being used up by the updates. However, I got it uh, updates done, got it going. Um, it's kind of cool being able to get that 103 uh, Cinebench on the testing with the thermal paste. It's definitely running a lot cooler and the fan doesn't run near as often and a lot of times it's silent unless you're uh, doing some big time stuff which on uh, the Mini Atom it don't take a whole lot to get that uh, processor obviously going but uh, I did notice that it is a little less um, you know, before it wasn't even that bad. It was pretty good. You could do most of your stuff uh, without too much of an issue. But, um, you know, it did seem to be a little bit better. And the fans were quieter. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And I will see you on the next video. It's a mini PC. It's mini.